Hello everyone, Lydia Lee here, and today I'm having a conversation with 90 Day Launch student Lee Hoxeth, who's recently launched her business to use her passion for behavior design to help coaches to create a bigger impact, not only with their clients, but in how they run their own coaching business. So I wanted to bring Lee on today to really share her journey of going from a somewhat fuzzy idea in the beginning of time to launching a meaningful business today and how she's using more of her genius zone uh, to run a business that feels more like who she is. Welcome, welcome, Lee, and thank you for having this conversation with me. Thank you, Lydia. I'm excited to be here. All right, let's start by uh, telling people a little bit about what you do, right? Who you help, uh, what you help people with, and why are you so passionate about it? Sure. So I work with health coaches, and I help them get amazing results for their clients and for themselves as business owners through learning more about behavior, behavioral science and behavior design. So I'm really passionate about this because I was working in public health several years ago, um, kind of in a government job, and I got really interested in how behavior works on an individual level rather than um, a large um, kind of state or citywide level. So I got interested in health coaching because in health coaching they do train you in the good health coaching um, schools about behavior change and how to kind of walk someone through that process. So I was a health coach for several years um, before I moved into corporate work. And during that time, I got really interested in something called behavior design, which um, is a simple system for looking at behavior that was created by BJ Fogg. He is a professor at Stanford. He also does some consulting work, and he actually has a lab at Stanford where he tests these um, theories and, and behavior design principles, so it's not something he's just spouting out. So I got really excited about that, and I became a certified behavior designer through his course and came back to my job and just got super excited about sharing this with um, my coworkers and, and my job, and then I started thinking, well, health coaches could really benefit from this because, as I said, we do learn a little bit about behavior change through health coach training, but not all health coaches have that training, first of all, and there's a lot that's missed. Um, one thing about behavior design that I think is really cool is it kind of is a simple way of looking at how to create programs, products, coaching experience that changes behavior that kind of incorporates all the old behavior change theories that we all learn in school into kind of a simple way of thinking about it. So that just really appealed to me and I, I love to share that. So that's what I do. I help health coaches um, learn those principles, apply them with their clients because it's often really hard for people to change their habits and change their behaviors and make the changes that health coaches are talking about and trying to get them to make. So I, I mean, you, when I when you and I started working together, you got me really interest, interested in behavior design, and and surprisingly, uh, you telling me actually you already do a lot of behavior design principles without you believing you've been doing it. But I I love the fact that you know this tool or this knowledge about behavior design is not only applied to um, you know how coaches help their clients to create results or whether it's you know weight loss or health issues, right? The things that are really important to their clients, they can also use that tool to really apply it to how they operate right in a business and how because that's so you know tiny habit changes and imperfect action which is sort of part of the you know part of the the principles of behavior design is so applicable you know to how we show up for our business so it's almost like I feel like it's such a value add you know that's not just helping clients to be better coaches but how to make sure that the coaching business they're actually running you know is simple and it's doable and it's not going to be complicated so they they can actually do it right you know one of the inaugural obstacles that you know you had to overcome was um sometimes this this comparison right of how others in the behavior design field you know, may have introduced the work, like as you mentioned, BJ Foggs, right? He's excellent. I love him as well. Um, and he's he's academic as well, but he's also a fun guy, right? He knows how to sort of humanize the the um, the, the, the the things, right? For people to understand when they, they're not familiar with behavior design. Uh, but as you started to look in the field of other people that come with this um, 
you know, skill set or this, th this knowledge about behavior design, there can sometimes be that comparison game of like, do I have to do more than what they're doing, you know, to be seen and be valuable, right? Or even uh, at times, I remember you telling me that, you know, the fact that behavior design was becoming a popular topic, you know, um, in, in podcasts, in all these different, you know, uh, out outlets, that it might mean it might be too competitive, you know, for you as well. So I want to ask you a really honest question um, about this, you know, this, this obstacle you may have had to kind of remove or try to eradicate. So how are you moving forward with some of these potentially, um, potential fears that might have been like telling you, am I, am I good enough to be part of this fear? Yeah, so, th so that was a definite block for me that you um, gracefully coached me through. Um, yeah, so behavior design, I studied it a few years ago, and it's just now kind of coming up in the corporate world and in kind of mainstream and companies and they're actually advertising for behavior designers and it's not really come out as much in the online business world in terms of health coaching that I've seen but I have lately seen a couple other people talking about it talking about applying it with health coaches because they would really benefit from this knowledge and I'm a perfectionist so I wanted to be first to get this fresh info out there and I'm competitive and I was like oh no somebody's already talking about this and um but then realized and also kind of coached myself along with you um that that's good that means there's a demand for it and um it's also good just because more people are learning about it and there's plenty of people that you know um, would benefit from from learning these things and applying these things so it's actually a good thing and i um stopped freaking out <laughs> Right. And it's also, I mean, I think from you moving forward with Imperfect Action, you started to embrace um, the fact that actually, it's a good, as you said, it's a good thing that if people are talking about it, it means that there is a demand, you know, and that's that's good. And that there's a, also this global market. I remember you and I having this conversation. It's like, it's not just in your little neighborhood or in your class, you know, with BJ Fogg, that this is it. This is the only people <laughs> that are allowed to do behavior design, right? Because there's a global market yeah. and audience that we can tap into. Um, and there's, you know, uh, there's, there's abundance of clients for everybody and and that you would be different in explaining those concepts and how you uh, present how it supports coaches right that maybe BJ Fox isn't even doing in his program right because he has a specific clientele or a market and so I think it's been really cool to watch you kind of embrace this new shift you know of a different narrative that actually it's great to have colleagues, you know, instead of competitors that are doing this work, we can be actually collaborators, you know, in the field. And I can remain true to being unique simply by just being myself <laughs> and knowing yeah. that not everyone knows about behavior design. I mean, I didn't even know about it till you came into my life, right? So what we think, you know, of course everyone knows because I know everything about it is sometimes that, right, that story we tell to believe that, mm -hmm. oh, I have to do something so different and never be, been done before in order, you know, to be successful. Um, I want to talk a little about genius zones today because you know I know that's something that was really important to you uh, when you started your business in order to do more of what you love and more towards you know your skill set, your personality type, um, you know, and and your style, right, of delivering work that I think was um, was a really cool journey for me to help you with as well. Now, how how did you think that you know based on what? you learn from the different, you know, how we built the foundations for your business in 90 day launch, right? From um, your niche to, you know, using market research to kind of find out what the, that niche is to your offer creation, to beta testing your offer, to, um, you know, sharing your vision with authentic marketing. Um, what, what was the most important thing that you learned from it all that supported you in launching your business specifically designed, you know, from your strengths, your values and, and your personality type? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, it's something I'm still learning, you know, still figuring out the creative process, how to express myself so that people, um, you know, so it helps people. But for a 90 day launch, it really helped provide a container for me. I had all these ideas and I could have gone any direction with them, but just having that structure and having your coaching help me kind of think about what were my strengths and how I like to communicate and um, what I liked doing, you know, versus what I thought I had to be doing. Um, mm. 
really helps me realize that I have a very analytical, logical side, you know, and part of my main offer now is, is an audit, but that I also really value coaching and kind of deep diving into the heart of an issue, which I think you really can't skip over a lot of times um, for my particular offer anyway. Um, so it's a great way to kind of mesh those two parts of myself, which I love. Um, the beta testing was hugely helpful for me in terms of boosting my confidence. And um, it's like I knew I could do it, but actually doing it with people and hearing feedback and hearing that it really helped them uh, really just gave me um, more confidence that this is something I could, I could really do and really help people with. So. Yeah. And were you surprised like when you did when you started working with, you know, coaches and different people that were um, that you had to educate around behavior design and, you know, kind of be curious about how can I support them in these different ways? You know, when it, whether it's a topic about marketing, whether it's a topic about being a better coach. Right. Were you surprised as to because, you know, your inaugural fear was that, oh, my God, everyone knows this already. You know, what am I bringing to the table? Right. But were you surprised or, you know, what sort of came up for you after you started working with with some real humans that you discover that, okay, maybe, maybe I do have something that is quite valuable. Yeah. So I started in a totally different direction with my beta clients. And then I started talking to them and hearing feedback and learning kind of really what they wanted help with. And so I had to shift gears in the middle of it. But even though I shifted gears to something that I didn't think I was going to be coaching on, which is kind of like a simple, authentic marketing approach. It actually fit really well with my skill set because it was something people wanted help with. Um, it's something that I believe in too. You know, simplicity changes behavior. It makes things easier. Um, so it really just kind of fit in nicely. Um, but I only learned that through doing the actual sessions, doing market research, which is helpful in learning what people wanted help with. Um, and initially I was resistant to it because you know everybody wants help with marketing everybody wants help getting clients I'm like oh you know I don't want to be just another person that's doing that mm -hmm. but the I do it differently and do it um in a way I think that helps make it a lot easier and more fun for people and not so overwhelming which is important to me because I'm doing it right now too and I want to walk my talk and I'm you know you teach what you most need to learn um so yeah, it, it was just good holistically in all of those ways. Yeah, it's interesting that sometimes for us to feel like we can do the work is just to just acknowledge that it can be easier. <laughs> You know, because I think yeah. um, it's a, a very natural thing. I mean, I certainly felt it when I first started a coaching business. I mean, God, there's a million coaches out there that are potential competitors, if you will, right, of, in my sphere too. And I too had this thought process, like I must come up with something that other people aren't doing. And, you know, I, I have to be so spe like a special snowflake, <laughs> you know, in order to be seen. Uh, but actually people kind of want pretty similar things. Like everybody, every health coach wants to do great work. They want to impact and create transformation and they want to get clients so that they can just do more of that work and be able to reward themselves financially. So in a lot of ways, it's like, why, 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 why crush that? Like, that's what people are looking for. I think what was really interesting is when you sort of went, you know, here's how I would get them to that destination in, in an approach that I believe could be quite transformative, you know, because everybody could teach how to get clients and how to market very differently. And you're look, you're dealing with more of that human focused, right, approach that is actually going to be attracting coaches that don't just want to take on any strategy. They want to feel authentic. And that was sort of the key thing, wasn't it? Yeah. And I kind of had to get over myself a little bit. I mean, I had to, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to teach these things and, you know, and I, but I had to hear what people wanted and what they're really struggling with. And then how can I mesh my skills and my strengths with that? Um, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting uh, journey and one I'm still on, but um, it's fun. It's fun figuring out how that sweet spot comes up because it's, mm. I feel like it's a constant moving target sometimes until you kind of figure it out. 
Yeah. And, 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 and that we will always be figuring it out. Like, I think part of the, the myth is that yeah. we should get it right, right the first time, you know, which right. is sort of the perfectionism monster story, right? Of like, if I get this wrong, I'll never have another chance to make it better, you know, and that, and that's something as a recovering perfectionist myself, I've had to embrace that every opportunity I decide to take in my business is a, another opportunity to, to do it differently. And that's okay, right? That's the, the freedom of being a business owner. Um, okay, so in terms of, you know, as you've been progressing to, you know, building your business, you're doing this full time as well, uh, while you're working full time as well in your corporate job, you know, a lot of this journey, as I always mentioned to students starting uh, the business journey is that be ready for a therapeutic journey also. <laughs> that mm -hmm. having a business is going to spark so much curiosity about who you want to become, but it's also going to challenge you in the most, the deepest way that I believe um, can be done in our in our lives that isn't offered to us in, you know, our day to day nine to fives, right, where we show up for the sort of reasonably the same job, we take the same route to work, we see the same people, mainly most of the days, right. Um, and there's a routine that sort of doesn't break us right from discovering who else we could be, <laughs> other than this mm -hmm. role, right. And business is so build your own adventure kind of deal that um, that can be daunting at, at times, you know, for for people to step into that role to define right who they want to be and what they want to become through a business um what has your journey been you know what have, what what have you learned um that was sort of valuable to you you know as you be as you start this journey as a business owner and also kind of moving the puzzle pieces you know as you do by creating the business that fits more on who you are was there any kind of uh, interesting things you learned about yourself in the process? You know, maybe it's how you may define a business now compared to what you thought it would be in the beginning of time, or were there sort of any valuable mind shifts, uh, mindset shifts along the way as well for you? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, it's funny. I actually uh, like my corporate gig. Um, I have worked for a great company. I um, like my team. We're now all remote since COVID. Um, but you only get a certain amount of days off each year. And, you know, I really want that flexibility and that, um, that lifestyle freedom. So what have I learned? I've learned actually just yesterday kind of came to this realization that I've been working on it a little more slowly. Like I did the 90 day launch, but it took me longer than 90 days. And it's been a slower, more deliberate um, process for me because I think I have a fear and this could be a limiting belief. I need to take a look at this more closely that I'm just going to, it's going to become too much. I'm not going to have time to do the things that I love. Mm. And I want to make sure that, that I'm not creating a monster kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, super excited about expressing myself creatively, which is um, scary, but also something I've always wanted to do. And I also feel like I just have a lot of knowledge to share that could be useful and who am I to not put it out there. Um, mm. I also was a health coach for many years. So I um, really believe in the power for good that health coaches, you know, have and bring to the world, <laughs> especially through coaching with you um, in every session, something new. Um, it's a constant uncovering. Imperfect action is a huge one. I know it's one that you talk about a lot, but it's something I always struggle with. And I think it's what took me so long to get this going is I just was scared to take any kind of action because if it wasn't perfect. So I've kind of gone the other end now where I'll just put stuff up, put stuff out there, even if it's not that great, because I know that as soon as I put it up, Five minutes later, I'm like, oh yeah, I could have done it this way. I could have done it this way. But I would never get to that point if I didn't just put it out there, right? Now I want to put out quality stuff, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So that's that's been huge, just the imperfect action. Yeah, and, and part of it is you're you're walking your talk, right? When you talk about behavior change, it is about pattern interrupt. You know, it's about it's about making small, tiny challenges that you can do that isn't going to be. I push you off the cliff and hope you you know fly. It's like I'm just going to do something tiny this week that allows me to change a little bit about my habits, so that if mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't die at the end of the week and no one shamed me for putting out that post and that <laughs> felt okay, I might do it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly right? using behavior design. 
life, like every day, constantly using it. That's that's also why I love it too, is this just can help you as a person and a business owner in every aspect of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that nice sort of message there is like, you know, the thing that you're sharing and feel passionate to give others is also a thing that we have to challenge ourselves to, to, to go through, you know, and, and that way it makes us better coaches, right. When we're able to be leading the way, not just by concept and knowledge and spurting that out there, but actually going, no, this is how I've also failed. This is also how I've had to navigate something hard. And let me show you what that honestly looks like, because I'm not a guru. I'm also someone um, out there in the wild, wild world trying to figure th- things out that isn't always perfect, right? And I think that's what mm-hmm. authenticity looks like for the, the future of businesses is that people want to hire coaches that can 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 resonate with the pain and the the confusion and the fuzziness that they feel they don't want to hire someone that has done no wrong you know that has Mm. never failed that has never made a mistake and i think that sort of human honesty is really necessary in the coaching world you know so that coaches feel less like they have to be perfect in order to do the work they want to do and clients feel like they can trust (laughs) someone that has right gone gone through the 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 forest to be able to tell them the uh, tell them apart right from the forest from the trees. So um, yeah, I think you're, you're doing it in a, in a really human way. Um, now, if people are interested in, you know, lots of coaches and also health coaches do uh, watch these videos and come into the community, um, if they're interested to learn more about what you mean by behavior design and how can that help me be a better coach and also help me be, um, be, be mindful about activities and things I'm doing in my business that's going to help mm-hmm. me to be more successful. Um, what, are, what are some ways that, where can they go and find resources that you maybe you have created uh, that you can share to kind of kickstart their journey of understanding how to apply, you know, behavior design to their coaching business right now? Right. So I'm on Instagram. That's my, the main place where I am. I'm trying to walk my talk and keep it very simple. So I'm just on Instagram. It automatically posts to my post to my business Facebook page, but it's at Lee Hogseth, and that's L E I G H H A U G S E T H. So I'm be posting on there. I just started putting stuff up the past two weeks, um, regular videos, and I'll be talking a lot more about it um, coming soon. I have a free offer there uh, for health coaches, and it is a marketing a simple marketing guide, um, so they can go and get that. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on board. It was so cool to see you kind of document your journey a little bit, you know, on this video. Uh, but I've seen uh, Lee's freebie. It's very, very helpful, even for uh, for someone who's a coach that's had a business for several years. It's really nice to uh, take a pause at times to even if you have a marketing plan, actually to use her guide to go, am I still on the right path? Or am I doing things that I think I have to do? Or is it things that I want to do? And I think all business owners should take this necessary pause because mm-hmm. things can get out of hand at times, you know, with what we we believe we have to do in our business. And I think it's a, a lovely, um, a lovely way to re- reconnect back to what's important uh, in our business and how we want to operate in it. So thank you for creating that for all the coaches <laughs> worldwide as well. So uh, we will we will post the links for Lee, um, how you can connect with her and uh, download her freebie as well. And of course, if you come to the 90 Day Launch community, you'll get to meet everyone uh, in the community. Um, everyone's there for life. So you don't just finish in 90 days and you'll never see us again. Uh, it is really a lifetime access to um, a wonderful group of people that are um, really genuinely wanting to do great, great work in the world. And I think the support system uh, is something we all need right now (laughs) to not feel so isolated, right? In doing business alone. Um, Thank you, Lee, for joining me. Thank you for telling your story and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Lydia.